As a committee, we understand that the matters of the London Consideration Act can be very emotive. However, please be respectful of those around you in the public gallery and the committee and refrain from any booing, cheering or any other form of disturbance. Councillors, tonight we shall be using electronic voting. Unless you ask for a recorded vote which requires a proposal and five further members in agreement, names will not be shown, just the number four against or abstaining. Okay, we'll go through that clip carefully each on by, by each application, okay? So now we move to the main items of business. Number one. Um, I'm, I'm asked to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of October 2019. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, good. Two, apologies for absence. Emma, are there any apologies for absence been received? Uh, yeah, we've got apologies from councillors John Rabini, Sally Dixon and uh, Michaela Mata Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, disclosures of interest, are there any disclosures of interest? Fine, Chairman, don't worry. <laughs> um, yes, I think we should just clarify the position of Farnham Town Councillors in relation to item 74A3. Um, this site uh, was not included in the main neighbourhood plan nor in the neighbourhood plan review, but at the Regulation 16 stage came in, as you see it now, with a proposal to use it as a SANG. And at the examination in public, uh, there was a statement of common ground signed between the town clerk and uh, the applicant to, uh, to explain to the examiner that were he to consider this a suitable use of the land, uh, it could be included as part of our, basically in the, in the neighbourhood plan, there's a list of potential sangs. So uh, whether we have to declare a personal interest, I have no idea, but you know, certainly no, no members were involved in that decision. It was, it was done at officer level. I'm advised that we can consider the issue, yes. Okay, and don't have to defend. Councillor Bishon. Good evening, Mr Chairman. Um, I have to declare an interest in the last item, WA 2019-0802, as I live in the same lane as the appellant, so I would have to withdraw for that one. Thank you. Any other declaration of interest? Is there a third hand? No? Item four, questions from members. Are there any mem questions from members received, Emma? Uh, none received. And then, um, members of the public. <laughs> <laughs> okay, none received, thank you. Okay, and then, finally, uh, are there any updates to the government guidance or legislation you should be aware of? Uh, no updates, Mr Chairman. Fine, right, before we move into Mayor, can I ask the people around the table to introduce themselves, please? The officers, I mean. Good evening, members. My name's Lewis Jones. I'm the planning solicitor. Good evening, members. My name's Chris French. I'm the area team leader. Good evening, members. I'm Dan Holmes. I'm a planning officer. Good evening. Uh, Rachel Kellis, principal planning officer. Good evening. Um, Philippa Stadden, senior planning officer. And uh, Chris Merry, interim head of planning, economic development. Um, Emma Dearsley, Democratic Services. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, right, we really move on to the main items of business tonight. There have been site, there was some site inspections on yesterday. It's as far as it's in December, but it was yesterday. So can we move on to the first item, which is, which is subject to public speaking, which is item A1, WA 2019-1058, nine long garden. Um, erection of a dwelling and associated works for demolition of existing dwelling. And could I ask Daniel Holmes' officer to introduce this item, please? Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. This application is for WA 2019-1058 and seeks planning permission for the erection of a four-bedroom, two-storey dwelling and associated works following demolition of the existing two-bedroom bungalow. This application has been brought before the area committee at the request of the local member in order to, give further, cons to further consider matters in relation to character, loss of a single storey accommodation and parking. Slide one indicates the location plan. 
The application site is located to the northwestern side of Long Garden Walk West. It comprises a single storey bungalow with driveway and rear garden. This shows the location of the site. Here you can see Long Garden Walk West. The proposed block plan shows that the build line on the southern boundary has been set back to allow for one metre distance to the boundary with number seven. One, mount, one metre boundary would be maintained with number 11, therefore respects the spacing and pattern of development. These are some photographs of the site. Photograph A shows the front of the application site looking west. There is a parking bay in front of the dwelling on Long Garden Walk West. This would remain. Photograph B shows the rear of the application site looking east. Photograph C shows the north flank wall of number seven. The blue arrow shows only the window on the side elevation. Sorry, it shows the only window on the side elevation. It is obscure glazed and serves a bathroom. Photograph D shows the front elevation and south flank wall of number 11. There are three windows on the side elevation and a side door that serves the kitchen. All three windows are secondary in nature and would not be the main source of light for the room to which they serve. Therefore, there would, no, there would be no significant loss of light or loss of privacy to number 11. This shows the proposed elevations. This slide shows the proposed front, eastern and side, northern elevations. The three windows at first floor level would serve a bathroom and would be obscure glazed. Therefore, there would be no concerns regarding loss of privacy to number seven. This slide shows the rear west, sorry. This slide shows the rear west and side southern elevations. The southeastern corner has been reduced so that the proposed development accords with the 45 degree rule. This shows the proposed street scene and shows the proposed view from Long Garden Walk West. It shows how the spaciousness between the neighbouring properties would be maintained. These are the proposed floor plans. It would comprise of a study, living room, kitchen and dining room on the ground floor. There would be four bedrooms with three bathrooms on the first floor. The main matters of consideration Officers have given consideration to the proposal and consider that the proposed dwelling would be acceptable for the reasons set out in the officer report and mentioned above, and considered the main matters for consideration um, to be design and impact on visual amenity. Officers considered the size, style and design of the dwelling would be visually acceptable. Sufficient space would be retained between the neighbouring dwellings. The design and impact on residential amenity. For the reasons outlined previously, there would be no material harm to any surrounding neighbouring amenities and access and car parking. Surrey County, County, Surrey County Council Highways have assessed the application on safety, capacity and policy grounds and subject to conditions regarding a construction management plan, officers are satisfied. Officers note the comments received from the Town Council and from neighbouring occupiers. These comments have been addressed above and in the officer's report. The application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, we have a public speaker on this particular item, and that is an objector, Mr Luke Stone. Could you come forward, please? You have four minutes when you... Good evening. We strongly object to this planning application on the grounds of overdevelopment, scale, loss of privacy due to overlooking and overshadowing of number 11 in particular. 
40% of number 11's windows will lose direct sunlight. Um, and they're not really just secondary um, windows, they're actually main windows in those rooms. Number 11's and the other properties, front and rear gardens will be overlooked, resulting in loss of privacy along with direct views into all the rooms of number four and number five long garden place, which is this sort of small courtyard opposite the properties, which hasn't been considered at all in the officer's report. The very close proximity and scale of the proposed new build will not only dramatically overshadow number 11, but they were also a threat to the bungalow's shallow foundations. It will impact on the value of number 11 and the quality of life of the occupant. This application is very similar to one at number 13 Long Garden Walk a few years ago. This was rejected a number of times on the grounds of scale and overdevelopment and being overlooked and, and uh, right to light. Permission was eventually granted and the final development was significantly better for both the owner and the neighbour. This application similarly needs more consideration and consultation. An ageing population means that bungalows in the town centre are sought after for independent living. It would therefore be a shame to lose another bungalow from this location in central Farnham and an area of predominantly bungalows and chalet style houses. Parking in this narrow narrow th no through road is already hotly contested and the parking provision for a property of this scale having four bedrooms is not is not adequate and is heavily restricted particularly given that there is um, public parking outside effectively blocking the property effectively blocks easy access to the front door and leaving no amenity space at the front of the property the design has little architectural merit and is, is an overdevelopment of the site which abuts the conservation area the scale and overshadowing will have a dim dramatic impact on the occupants of number 11 in particular. We, we believe this should be, the application should be considered further, um, in particularly in relation to the, the light in number 11, and we request that it's rejected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Councillors, anybody wish to comment? Oh, yes. Councillor Edmonds and Councillor Kirkley, Murray, Murray Lees. Uh, <clears throat> can I start with two questions to the officers, please? First, could you try and identify or illuminate the access and car parking issues? When I visited the site, it already looked as if the area had been overdeveloped. And the other question I've got is, is this not an air quality management area? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Members. Um, in relation to parking, there is no change to the current parking situation. Um, you can see indicated on the bottom left of, of this drawing, um, the space is indicated for parking. Um, that won't change. It remains as existing. The, our, the Waverley Parking Guidance requires space for 1.5 spaces of a building, a dwelling of this of this size, um, and that won't change. the The total distance is nine point six meters uh, from end to end, uh, so there is sufficient space as per the requirement of our parking guidelines. Um, in terms of the a AQMA, it is within the air quality management area and if you look on to page 11 we've got um, comments from environmental health um, where they've um, raised no objections subject to conditions thank you chairman Councillor Murleys thank you chairman uh, when we went on the site visit uh, we were very aware of the fact that we could see the sort of trail where the sun would go and actually because of the height of the building that they are proposing to put there, um, we could recognise, Councillor Martin and I could recognise very clearly that the sun was blotted, was completely um, obfuscated uh, by the wall that would be erected by the actual house that's going to be proposed, would be erected and, and stopped any light getting into the side of uh, number 11. Um, 
even if it traveling across, it would have ended up with nothing at all. So um, that was a big concern for us. We did actually um, have a, a big pole, <laughs> five meters, to get a real understanding of how tall this wall would be. And then we realized that the, the wall would be really very overbearing. And, not a, and, and then another three meters, possibly, was going to be actually the, the height of the, the highest point of the, the next door house, the house that's proposed. And it just seemed completely overbearing and overwhelming. Um, that was her back door, as far as I can make out. So the lady's back door. So um, although the, it, it, you say it's not a primary window, you, you know, often we have our kitchen back doors open. We like to have sun coming. We have light coming into that area. OK, thank you. Any other councillor? Uh, councillor Hess. Hello, good evening, officers. I went to the site visit as well. Um, it was a bright, sunny day. Um, a few, few points I'd like to make. Um, I don't actually agree with the statement that, that uh, this proposed new house accords with the pattern and spacing of the street. Apart from the best efforts of Waverley planners and um, committees in previous years, um, allowing... Um, the house at number 13 to be built, which is way out of scale, and it overshadows number 15. That was very clear on our site visit. The bungalow number 15 was really in shadow, um, just in the same way that the bungalow existing of the neighbor at number 11 will be totally overshadowed by this overbearing, large, detached house. I mean, can you imagine having um, a five meter wall raising sheer up, like the Berlin Wall, really, one meter from the boundary, straight outside your back door. Now, I wouldn't like that. I'd really kick up. And I don't think anybody else in this room would like that. So that's a really major issue of overshadowing and overbearing development very close to an existing bungalow. This street was traditionally bungalows at that end, and slowly but surely the proposals are to erode that and turn it into big, bulked-up, four-bedroomed houses. Thank you. Councillor Corburn. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I have great sympathy with everything I've heard tonight, but... This road reminds me a little bit of a play by UNESCO, I don't know if anybody else studied it at any point, called Rhinoceros. And it started off with, in a village, and one man had a rhinoceros head, and he was odd, and everyone pointed at him. And then gradually more and more people got rhinoceros heads, and in the end, there were more people with rhinoceros heads than without. And you can guess the end, there was one person without a head at the end. And I think sometimes, you know, that was to do with the um, uh, movement of the Iron Guard in, uh, in Romania, but this is slightly, um, shall we say, less dramatic. But to me, every time I look at a street scene like this, I do remember, like everybody says, the bungalows, and I do remember the fight we had um, when the first one came in to turn it. And I do remember Councillor Frost calling it a cathedral, I don't know if anybody else was in the council chamber at the time. Um, you know, we're in a very difficult position here because if you look at that street scene, what is being proposed does fit into the current street scene, not the street scene that we perhaps remember. Uh, and remember, we're not allowed to penalise uh, an applicant for coming in late in the day. You know, he wasn't the first one to come along and, 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 and put our two stories on. But over the years, that's what's happened. And now, as you can see, we're going to end up with four two stories in this little Class, uh, cluster and, and one bungalow and I find this very very hard because instinctively you know I'd like to wind the clock back but we can't do that we have to look at what we've got um, I'm sad there was no pre-application device am I correct on that I've just checked on the application because perhaps um, uh, one or two of the the 
issues that have been raised might have been addressed at that point. But I find this really, really difficult, you know, trying to be fair to everyone uh, in this situation, the, the neighbour and indeed the applicant. But I find this extremely hard, given uh, what's already happened in, in Long Garden Walk. I, I find this a very difficult one to decide. Any other council wish to speak? No. Well, Councillor Edmonds, we've got a lot on the agenda. Is there any additional to what you've already said? Sorry? A lot on the agenda, Councillor Edmonds. Is this additional to what you've already said? Additional statement? Yes, it's additional. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, um, my main concern is that under the Planning Act 2008, Chapter 29182, we have to look at the mitigation of climate change. We also have to consider our legal obligations of under the air quality management area. And I think under the both or sorry, under both or circumstances, this application does not seem appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Edmonds. I understand that has been reviewed as part yes. of the review. According to my advice. Okay. Right. The um, oh, George, Mr. Chairman, is any Mr. Chairman, just last thing. I, I looked through the notes. I I couldn't see whether there was any uh, proposal for an electric charging point on this property. Is there? Conditions, conditions six. Six, Councillor Hess. Right, uh, can we move to the vote? Now, as I said at the beginning, we're going to have electronic voting, but the, the names will not be recorded unless there are five other items which to one. All right, so you beat me to it, Councillor Boyd. Any other five people? I would like to propose we record this so that people can see what their councillors vote for, so I would certainly propose that we record it. I would second it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, we have to have a reason for refusal if that is the vote, therefore. Could I have somebody come forward with a reason for refusal? Did you display the name? Yes, Ken Sedmans. Yeah, no. I think it's 
I thought you, I wasn't sure I was going to give you a proposal or I was going to give you reasons, but whatever. You, you yeah. tell me, Mr. Chairman, reasons what you're looking for. Reasons for refusal, I think. Yes, reasons for refusal. Oh, sorry. With the reasons for refusal, please. Anybody come forward? Councillor Hess. Loss of light, overdevelopment, overbearing. It's not to disagree with any of that, but it's by virtue of the design, I feel. I feel had there been mm. the application advice, we could perhaps have got this done in a one-hour. But I feel as a result of the... Um, of the what's the word I'm looking for? Unsympathetic design, I think, has resulted yes. in the uh, loss of light and uh, on the effect on the, on the neighbour's amenity. Did you add something, Councillor Edmonds, to that? Excessive development in an excuse me, air quality management area. Oh, yeah. We really need to address atmospheric okay. pollution. Right. Officers, have you got some wording you can put forward to us? I don't know. I don't think you can put the air quality bit in. No. Um, so we've got some wording for um, a character um, and a neighbouring amenity reason, if we want me to do you want me to run, the, yeah, run for yeah. this. I mean, it's a bit, a bit of, you know. Okay. Um, so as a result of the... Un unsympathetic design of the dwelling in proximity to the neighbouring property of number seven Long Garden Walk West. The proposal would result in an over-dominant appearance and undesirable overdevelopment would be that it would detract from the character of the street scene. So that's the character character reason. Um, and then um, the proposed development would result in a loss of light to number seven Long Long Garden Walk West to the detriment of the amenity um, of neighbouring dwellings in conflict with policy TD1 of the Waverley Local Borough Local Plan 2018 and part, sorry, part one, and save policies D1 and D4 of the 2002 Local Plan. Mr. Um, Corburn. It's also not in compliance with the FMP1. A proposal, motion yes. To a proposal for motion to refuse. I know that there will be no shortage. Councillor Brishan and seconder, Second. Councillor Edmonds. Okay, let's vote on that then. Who wishes to? Can we start the vote now? Yeah. Okay, let's go with it. Everybody was it? <laughs> yes. Not everybody was it. Okay, just a minute. Okay, well, that's carried, I presume. No, we can't vote. Hmm? We can vote again. Vote again, vote again. I'm told to vote again. Oh dear. Uh, and vote again? We'll just do it by counting if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Those four? Those, yeah. Those for refusal due to the reasons stated. Put your hand up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Against? One. One. Two. Abstain, is that it? One, okay, right, fine. Well, the application is refused due to reasons as stated. Ch Chairman. Uh, 
Uh, can we just clarify, was the loss of light on number seven or number 11? Uh, <laughs> well, we've been able to... Does it matter? Does it matter? I didn't that. Well, was that... Okay, we'll change it. Yeah, carry on. That's okay. Um, just to clarify, that should be number 11, which is the bungalow adjoining rather than number 7 on both those reasons. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Forwards we go. Okay. At uh, uh, five heart house, the heart far number you. Sorry? Okay. Mm, give me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the five heart house, the heart far And the officer, could, Philippa, could you present it, please? Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Um, the application seeks permission for the installation of a condensing unit and associated pipework to the rear of Five Heart House. Before I take you through the proposal, I'd like to present a verbal update. Um, it's recommended that condition three of the agenda reports be updated as follows. Prior to the first use of the condenser unit hereby approved, a detailed product specification and noise assessment, including any mitigation measures and details of any enclosure, shall be submitted to and approved by the local planning authority. The assessment shall demonstrate that the noise levels of all plant, machinery and equipment installed or operated in connection with this permission shall be enclosed and or attenuated so that any resultant noise shall not exceed a level of five decibels below the existing background level or 10 decibels below if there is a particular tonal quality. When measured according to the British standard BS 4142 2014 at any adjoining or nearby noise sensitive premises. Once approved, the condenser unit shall be installed and retained at all times in accordance with the approved details. The key difference with the revised condition is that a product specification and noise assessment would be required to be submitted and approved prior to the first use of the condenser should permission be granted. This has not altered the officer's recommendation, which is for approval. Um, and as Councillor Beeman just said, a separate listed building application has been submitted and we will consider that after this item. So turning to the location plan, the application site is located to the northeast of the heart in Farnham Town Centre Conservation Area. The site currently comprises a two-storey end terrace grade two listed building currently in use as the holistic dental centre. Um, the site is accessed via Lion and Lamb Yard and you come down this access track here. Um, the aerial photo, you can see um, the heart here, um, lower heart and Waitrose car park to the north here, and the St. John ambulance site here. Um, here we see the proposed block plan. Um, the location of the pr proposed condenser unit is, is here to the rear of, of the dental centre. So some photographs of the site. Um, photograph A is taken from the northeast, looking towards the rear of number five. Um, photograph B is taken from the north, looking towards the rear amenity space of numbers one, two, and three Arundel Place, um, which are in residential use. Um, photograph C is taken from the south, looking towards the side elevation of eight Timber Close, which is also in residential use. And photograph D shows a close-up of the wall to which the condenser unit would be adjoined. Here we see the ground floor plan, um, which shows, again, the location of the condenser unit. Uh, 
the unit would be 0 0.4, 0.84 metres wide, 0.3 metres deep and 0.7 metres high with the relevant uh, refrigerant pipe work. Um, on the elevations, um, here we see the existing elevation. Um, on the proposed elevation, you can see the location of the proposed condenser unit and the relevant pipe work here, and a side elevation showing um, where the condenser unit would protrude. Um, the matters, uh, so this slide contains what officers consider to be the main considerations in relation to the proposal, and I'll run through each of these in turn. Um, so with regards to heritage impacts, the MPPF states that where a development would lead to less than substantial harm to the significance of a designated heritage asset, asset, this harm should be weighed against the public benefits of the proposal, including securing its most optimal use. The Council's Heritage Officer considers that the proposal would result in less than substantial harm to the listed building, which would be outweighed by the public benefits afforded by the proposal, in this case, they're in the form of improved comfort and amenity to staff and visitors of the dental centre. On this basis, officers consider that the proposal would have an acceptable impact on the listed building and the conservation area. With regard to the impact on the AQMA, the Council's environmental health team have been consulted on the application and consider that the proposal would not give rise to significant amounts of air pollution or introduce new receptors into an area of poor air quality. With regards to the impact on residential amenity and noise, the proposed condenser unit would not be highly visible, visible and would be located adjacent to an existing parking area. On this basis, the unit would not result in harm in relation to loss of light, outlook, privacy or have an overbearing impact. With regard to noise, the Council's Environmental Health Officer has been consulted on the application and have recommended a number of conditions to ensure that the pro proposal would not result in an unacceptable noise or disturbance to neighbouring occupiers. As noted at the start of this presentation, condition three of the agenda report has been amended to require the submission and approval of product specification and a noise assessment prior to the first use of the condenser. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. We have public speaking on this item. First of all, we have an objection of Mr Butterworth. Please, please come forward. Um, first of all, thank you very much for uh, giving me permission to speak on behalf of my mother, uh, who lives at number one Arundel Place, um, which you probably saw on the diagram there. Uh, to give you some information, um, she resides at one Arundel Place um, on her own. That's her permanent residence. Uh, she's aged 88, and uh, I'm pleased to say in general good health, uh, including her hearing, which is excellent. Um, but uh, she doesn't go out very often or very far, and visitors are very important to her. Um, and uh, as often as she can, she does use her back garden, which uh, you could see actually in photograph B, I think, um, where the overhanging sort of leaves were. Uh, <coughs> in um, good weather, she will you know, have people there for coffee, lunch, tea, etc. So I think that's relevant in terms of assessing you know, the impact of this uh, proposal on um, the residential amenity. Um, even, I think, low-level noise uh, would, um, if it was persistent, you know, disturb her well-being and peace and quiet. And uh, I'm, as I understand it, the, the sort of low-level noise we're talking about would be equivalent of a car engine running at, at, when it was stationary. But I'm very pleased to hear of the uh, proposal to do a full assessment of the output and also the background uh, noise in, in that area. So I'm giving you this information, really, so you can fully appreciate the likely impacts of a condensing unit being put in there um, on her well-being. And the recommendation is for you to um, agree the application with certain conditions, and I wanted to address particularly condition three, um, which was about the rating level of noise not exceeding the background sound level, um, which I was unsure about the background sound level. Obviously, there will be a scientific technical report on that now um, to give you an accurate assessment, but it is um, more than usually quiet area of Farnham, which was a particular attraction for her in uh, deciding to move there uh, approximately 15 years ago. Um, there's no moving traffic. There is occasional sort of parking of cars and driving away and the odd occasional delivery from vans, etc. But otherwise, um, the, there is no significant 
uh, traffic or you know, other noise uh, to disturb her peace and quiet. And I think the conditioner might well um, threaten that. Uh, condition four, which I understand was an attempt to sort of limit the impact on uh, nearby residences by limiting the number of hours when the condensing unit could be run. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I think may well fail to reach its objective in that because the proposed hours are essentially working hours, which amount to 56 hours a week. Um, those would be hours of daylight in, in the spring and summer um, when she'd be most likely to be using her garden um, and often also have her windows open either in her bedroom or sitting room or uh, she has patio doors at the back which lead onto the small garden there. Um, so although that would limit the hours of use, it wouldn't necessarily limit the impact on uh, her everyday life. Um, so I don't think condition four would particularly protect my mother's interests or the impact on the residents. Um, so once again, thank you for allowing to, me to speak. And I, I would like to just add that um, my sister, my mother and I have received very good communications and support from you know, the officers of the council and the councillors um, that we've been in contact with. So I appreciate that. Um, but I would res respectfully ask, however, that uh, you take um, my mother's interests on board and refuse the application on the grounds that it will have an unacceptable impact on uh, the residential amenity uh, immediately adjacent to the proposed condensing unit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another speaker who is a supporter, Emma Davidson. Good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen and uh, chairman. Um, if you visit my practice website, you'll see testimonials from many of my patients who travel between one and three hours to have treatment by myself and colleague, my colleagues. Your decision, which affects my practice, will have a ripple effect on other shops and restaurants in Farnham. My patients live so far away or in neighbouring towns, the dental visit becomes an outing for them. I have a small business, but my clients support the retail and restaurant businesses in Farnham. The retail sector has suffered terribly over the last few years. There are 11 prime retail units empty in Farnham today. Shouldn't we be doing everything we can to help preserve the vitality of our town centres? The company that we consulted to plan the air conditioning system said that for the square footage of the building, we would need two condensing units. I deliberately refused this plan, wanting to have as little impact on the outside of the building and the amenity of neighbours as possible. So accepted the compromise to supply the two surgeries only and not, not even the waiting room. This meant that the patients who are, who are having treatment themselves would benefit. The system is a small residential size unit. Uh, the specification is that it runs at 64 decibels and normal conversation is 60 decibels, more than 10 decibels lower than a car engine running. Just today, I counted 35 grade two listed buildings in West Street in the borough area of Farnham. All 35 had air conditioning with large condensing units. Most condensers were very close to residential accommodation in the, in the form of apartments above or adjacent to the areas. Um, I wonder if the area committee was involved with all these decisions regarding planning. Figures from the National Met Office show that this summer, from June to July, there were six days where temperatures rose over 30 degrees Celsius. Realistically, climate change is affecting all of us, but in a medical environment, it's, it's vital that patients are as comfortable as possible. In, in reality, the unit will only be use, in use for 10 to 15 days per year, therefore having extremely limited impact on neighbours, 10 to 15 out of 365 days. I'm a small local business, but decisions such as this being deliberated today, if refused, makes the location less attractive and would encourage me to relocate elsewhere where it would not be able to support other local businesses or look after local clients or those that travel. It could actually affect the viability of the business itself. I'm an employer in Farnham. Patients would choose to possibly better conditions elsewhere. Many of the studies of the noise of dental equipment shows that suction machinery and drilling can exceed 80 decibels. So with the windows in the surgeries open, the noise heard by neighbours would arguably be higher than the operating noise of a unit which operates at about the noise of a local a, a, a usual conversation. Please put yourself in my patient's shoes. I see hundreds, if not thousands of patients in, in, in a given year. 
Do you get hot under the collar just thinking about dental treatment? Dentistry is extremely nerve-wracking. In fact, it is the most common phobia. When patients are nervous, they get hot. We had several patients feeling faint on the hot summer days this year. I myself could not sit outside in, de in temperatures over 30 degrees. So if, if elderly people sit outside, surely they're at risk of dehydration. I'm very, very considerate of uh, the local neighbours and um, I thank, thank you all for listening and thank you for the planning officer, environmental health officer and env environmental pollution officers being fair and sensible in assessing this case. Please help me to look after my patients. Thank you very much. I mean, we actually judge each application on its own merits, as you appreciate. Okay. Councillors, anybody wish to comment? Councillor Hess. I'd like to... Um, I went on the site visit and I agree uh, that it's a very quiet, close and um, very enclosed. So the um, humming at any level could be irritating to uh, neighbours in Arundel Place, particularly elderly people. Um, I fully, fully appreciate the needs of the surgery and their patients and staff. Um, so I'd like to just ask questions about the amended condition concerning the acoustic cabinet, uh, because <clears throat> when I spoke to Acoustic Enclosures Limited, uh, they talked about, the, they do a lot of work in London in similarly enclosed uh, circumstances. And... Um, the noise impact survey before and after is very reasonable, very good. Uh, an acoustic enclosure is good, perhaps with the louvers turned away from the cottages. Um, but uh, according to the director at acoustic enclosures, a specialist, um, the sound of the unit should be pitched at 10 decibels below the ambient background noise, not five. Um, so I'd like you to just consider that for a moment, and perhaps I could come back to you after. Thanks. Yes, can I? would like to ask a question. I may be misled, but the plastic downpipes, I didn't think they were associated with the condenser. Do, do you mean the existing? The existing, but The no. existing aren't, no. Okay, sorry, I was misled. <clears throat> Sorry, the, the other comments I've got is it would have been helpful if I'd had understood why an internal condenser could not have been used. And the other question, uh, concerns I have is that the government recommendation is that conditions should be kept to a minimum and enforceable. I'm not sure how the enforceability will apply for this con external condenser. Thank you. Well, I don't know. Councillor Coburn, you speak? No, not really. I mean, I, I support this application, but um, like Councillor Hess, I've done my homework, and I do know that, you know, there are units and units, and in a sensitive area like this, I, I hope we would uh, aim for the best and, and push the applicant that way in terms of, uh, as you've done in, in, the, in the condition. Um, something somebody said that I was going to come back. Oh, that's right. I mean, the point about monitoring the noise going forward is that the uh, nearby neighbours would always have access to our environmental health team if there really were a, a problem with noise. Um, you know, if, if, if all the measures we put in to try and mitigate the sound, you know, whatever um, acoustic cabinets, whatever we can put in, and the best of all possible um, uh, equipment, if there's still further down the line some problem, then it's always up to the um, uh, residents to contact environmental health and get the system turned off. Wish to speak? And Councillor Murray's. Um, can you just uh, verify for me, uh, the lady who just spoke said that she would probably only be using it about 15 days of the year. Is that right? Did we get that right? Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, the 15 days um, usage wasn't set out in the application. Um, although that, that is what, what the applicant said. Um, but we have um, 
that's why we've conditioned the hours of, of operation so they wouldn't be used outside of, of those hours. Thank you. Is there an additional item you wish to speak? Yes. Are the officers able to clarify about the 10 decibel below ambient sound? Mm -hmm. And also, also um, regarding the, supposing we can get to the 10 decibels below, which they do in London, then can the louvers be put on the side of the unit so that any sound is directed to the right hand side? And the other question was, uh, the type of cladding, because it's the rear of a listed building, um, and I know it's not the best elevation in the world, but the neighbors in Arundel Place do overlook it. Um, be nice if the windows were painted and, <laughs> and uh, it was smartened <laughs> up a bit. But anyway, if the uh, acoustic enclosure was clad with, say, oak weatherboarding, which would weather <laughs> nicely, toned down in line with a listed building in that situation, that could be uh, a nice touch just to improve the rear look of it, rather than a big white box with a fan whizzing round and uh, pipes which typically start to get a bit rusty. Okay. So I uh, want to disguise that. Could that be uh, a consideration? I, I think, Councillor, we've got to be careful with one or two details. That's quite good. Thank you, Chair. Um, we can only consider the application as it's, as it's been submitted, uh, Councillor Week, and certainly, um, obviously, your comments can be heard by the applicant, and we hope that she would take them into account if, the, if, if, if permission is granted. But we can only determine the application on the basis of its submission. Well, I don't actually agree with that, um, uh, Mr. Head of Planning, because we've already, has, we've already got a concession to have an acoustic be... housing, and it's in conservation area on a listed building. So you can't just go plonking a white box on the wall. It's just not acceptable. Uh, it should Councilor be made Hess, to be aesthetically Hess, attractive. Councillor Hess, I mean, uh, Councillor Hess, I understand your, your emotions, and I understand your desire, and I think by the fact that... Informative three has been amended accordingly that that will all be taken into account. Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think most of us welcome the redrafting of condition three, and it certainly means that I will, instead of objecting, will be supporting. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? No. Okay. Now, now I'm advised. We don't want uh, revised to revised condition. Right, can you, oh, yeah, right, can you, yeah, I know, I know, but I mean, the whole thing. Do we, can we use the thing? Well, I'm... Um, chairman, can, can I support we have another, <coughs> another go? And in case I didn't make it clear, in my original statement for recorded voting, I did mean every vote this evening, not just that particular one. Yes, I know, Councillor Ward, Ward, but I did ask that question, and I was told until the Constitution amended, I've got to take it one by one. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I Sorry, Chairman. If you're saying we have to do it one by one, then I'd like to reiterate my former comments on the first one, and I shall do so for every application. This does seem rather a waste of time. I can't vote because you didn't answer about the 10 decibels below ambient. I don't know where I am. That's really important to me, and that wasn't answered. I can't vote. Well, is there an answer or not? <laughs> no? Councillor, Mr. Bay.
the condition states that any resultant noise shall not exceed a level of five or, below, or ten below if there is a particular tonal quality. So we, the tonal quality is the key issue here, and we will, um, we will insist on a ten decibel level below. Okay. The, the, uh, the application is granted, therefore, on those conditions. And, yeah? yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may I reiterate my yeah, request yeah, yeah. for a recorded <laughs> vote yet again? Yes, okay, yes. Five, please. Yeah, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, could I say that that's like to be everyone in the future? I think so. Right? Okay, right. Vote please on listed building consent for the installation of condensing unit at Five Heart House, the Heart. Oh, no, this is a listed building consent. Um, yeah, I know it's confusing. You've just right. you've just voted against. Is that right? I voted against. No, I won't. Have that. Did that? Can you? Ah, well, are we still flashing into it? So I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't vote. Yeah. It's, isn't it? Gosh. No one, no one to chat to the visa. All right, okay, yeah. Yes? Sorry, Neil and Hess. All done? Okay, right, the, uh, guess what? The uh, application is granted. Uh, 10 to 1, yes, okay, thank you very much. Now, back to public speaking items, actually. Um, again, the next two items are sort of are in similar to, next to each other, but in fact, uh, they are sort of separate, so therefore we'll have separate presentations for both. The first one is A3, which is WA 2019-15008, the land adjoining Farnham and Park Hotel and Restaurant, Lower Hale, Farnham. The, chain, the proposal is a change of use from agricultural land to a suitable alternative natural green space, signed together with provision of a new car park. The um, officer concerned is Rachel Callas, and I ask her to present, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good evening, members. As set out, the application is for a change of use of the agricultural land to a suitable alternative natural green space, or SANG, as I shall refer to it for the presentation, together with the provision of a new car park. Starting with the location of the site, you'll see it's outlined in red for you on the screen here. You'll see it's quite a large site. It wraps around the existing hotel, which is located just here, and that's the subject of the next agenda item. So the main access is onto this lay-by here, which you'll be fairly familiar with, which serves the restaurant at the moment. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see an aerial view of the site. You'll see primarily at the moment the application site is made up of open fields and it adjoins Farnham, the existing Farnham Park Sang, which is just to the left of this boundary here. You will see that there is a sort of cutout section just here that contains a number of residential properties as well as the hotel itself, so those do not form part of the application site. Turning to the proposed site plan, the proposal is for SANG, and the SANG is of a size that it could mitigate for up to sort of 690 residential dwellings in terms of their potential impact on the Thames Basin Heaths SPA. In practical terms, in terms of what you'll see on the ground, you'll see there are footways which make their way around the site, providing a circular walk. The majority of existing features you'll see will be retained there. You'll see the existing pond is maintained. Key hedgerows and trees would also be maintained. At the top of the site, you'll see there's an area of a, a buffer layer to the residential dwellings above, and that simply means that the sort of footpaths and formal access ways through the site would, would be excluded from that area just to provide some separation between the, the key public areas in the site and the rear residential gardens. The SANG would utilise the existing access from A325 that goes past the hotel, and there would be a dedicated car park provided for the SANG, which is just here. There are three points where there will be footpaths linking to the existing Farnham Park and the footpath network which exists already in that. 
So that punch through the head is just about here, here, and here. Turning now to the site photographs. So four photos for you on the screen. On the two left-hand side, you'll see the sort of open area of grassland that would be the subject of the application. On the right-hand side, this would be the access into the Sang. That's the gate there that would provide the access, and the car park would be just beyond that point. On the top right, this is looking down towards the existing access way. Turning now to the matters for consideration. Before I talk through these in too much detail, I would just note that there is an additional neighbour representation which is coming late. It's not on an update sheet due to the timing that that was received. It raises similar points. The, the neighbour who submitted that does raise similar points to what was submitted previously in the application. And primarily, it raises questions over boundary treatments around the neighbouring properties which are immediately adjacent to the site. I'll come back to that point in terms of the impact on residential amenities shortly. So in terms of the application, the key matters for consideration tonight are access and car parking. In terms of the application, it would utilise the existing access to the hotel to access the SANG, and there would be a new car park specifically for the SANG provided as part of the proposal. In terms of the impact on the countryside and the visual impact, there's very little visual change. The main change would be additional footpaths within the SANG. That sort of recreational use is considered to be acceptable in principle and very much compatible with the countryside location. The location of the car park is quite dis discreetly placed adjacent to an existing area of hard standing. Turning to the impact on residential amenity, the application you will see is subject to a number of conditions and also a legal agreement. There would be a detailed management plan, a landscape ecological management plan, and that would look at the details such as the surfacing materials of the pathways, and it would also look at boundary treatments around the site to ensure that things like walk, dogs being walked and things like that are kept under control. And that would also serve to mitigate and manage any potential impacts on neighbouring residential properties. Turning to the effect on the SPA and the effectiveness of the proposed SANG, as an extension to Farnham Park, it has the potential to make quite a significant contribution in terms of the number of dwellings that the Farnham Park, as extended, could mitigate for. That's estimated to be 696 dwellings that that could be used as mitigation for in due course. In respect to biodiversity, the Landscape Ecological Management Plan would ensure that appropriate attention is given to the existing ecology interests on site, including existing trees and features, and ensuring that appropriate habitat is retained on site for wildlife on that, on that site for, as existing. I'll therefore, refer you to your, the recommendation in your agenda report, which is for approval, uh, subject of the conditions as set out, and also subject to a legal agreement and that is to secure the long-term management of the SANG and also to, to control the access points through into Farnham Park itself. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a public speaker on this item, and as a supporter, Mr Neem. David Neem, could you come forward, please? Good evening, members. Uh, my name's David Neem from Neem Sutton Limited. We're the planning agents for the applicant. Uh, members, you'll recall that this is actually a revised application following an earlier application presented to this committee on the 11th of June. This application addresses the concerns raised by members in that June committee, namely the need for certainty across the whole SANG site, further input from Surrey County Highways regarding the access arrangements, and finally further input and amendment to the car parking area regarding uh, issues relating to secure by design. As members will note, this proposal seeks to provide an extension to Farnham Park SANG, providing an additional 10.61 hectares. The proposal has been worked up in conjunction with Natural England and following advice received from your officers, and therefore meets all of the Natural England requirements for SANG. There is a need for additional SANG in the Farnham area to accommodate the level of new housing identified in the Farnham Neighbourhood Plan. This proposal will provide capacity for approximately, um, I think we've just heard under, under, just under 700, I have a note of 670, that depends very much on the occupancy multiplier that's, that's applied. 
The Council's Parks team has confirmed that connection can and will be provided to Farnham Park and that will be secured through the Section 106 agreement, as will ongoing management um, and the mechanism for the transfer of the SANG in due course. Uh, this application, along with the separate application, the next agenda item that secures the access through to the SANG, will deliver all of the additional SANG capacity required to meet the full housing allocation for Farnham with a surplus. This proposal has evolved through engagement and agreement with Farnham Town Council, and as you've already heard this evening, a statement of common ground was presented to the recent Farnham neighbourhood plan examination to that effect. The delivery of the SANG in this area will provide a significant community asset in terms of leisure and recreation. And in this regard, members, I respectfully request that you accept your officer recommendation and grant planning permission tonight, subject to the completion of a legal agreement. Thank you. Right. Councillors, your turn. Are you speaking? Are you speaking? Okay. Hello again. Is the right of way through from the public highway up into the car park. Is that guaranteed under all circumstances? Please. Um, I'll let the, the, yes, the, the, yeah, thank you for the question. I presume this is sort of question geared at whether this is linked to the next item on the agenda. Is that fair to say? Um, so it's an exist, the point is it's an existing access layer, there's an existing route through so there's, there are no further works that are required to be secured through any other permission. So this is capable of being implemented in its own right. A standalone application should be treated on that basis. A question, Councillor Hess? Not indeed. Yes, it is all right, okay. Speak. Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just picking up on one point in the presentation by the supporter, he used the word certainty. Um, if this application is granted, is there any certainty that it will be used as SANG uh, rather than another application arrive for more housing? And reading paragraph one of the summary, we are referred to another item submitted by the same applicant that seems to intimate there is some sort of tie-up is the other one seen as vital or enabling to this application thank you thank you for the question um in terms of the link between the two i'll start with that question first of all now, there are no formal works required as part of this as part of the next application on the agenda in order to necessitate this. It is capable of being implemented in standalone form, and that is why there is no sort of formal link by way of condition or anything else on the agenda. In terms of certainty of it coming forward, that is entirely at the discretion of the applicant. As with any permission we grant, it will be entirely their decision as to whether or not to implement that. But I would point you to the planning history for the site. There is quite a long lengthy one in terms of an attempt to get residential development on this site, which has been, been, through the, been through appeal and been through this committee on a number of occasions. So certainly you can see that by the applicant having proceeded and made, it, made amendments following the previous SANG application, there is a clear attempt and intention here to implement SANG on the site. I, think I can offer no more certainty than that, but certainly you've got an application before you and it will be the applicant's discretion as to whether or not they implement that permission. Councillor Corburn. Um, I obviously, um, you know, welcome this use on this particular site, um, as did the officers when there was some um, residential attached to the use of part of the site for SANG. Uh, I think this is uh, a really good use of this piece of land. It gives uh, the certainty of SANG um, and therefore the delivery of housing. Um, and it, it, to me, it does what it should do, which is extend the, the park, because... It, when, you know, looking at the land as we do, it just seems to us a, a natural little bit of the park to go up to the uphill road. So um, I'm just quite delighted and, uh, and, and, and I look forward to seeing this absolutely completed. I mean, at the moment, I think there's so much improvement that the, the SANG will 
produce uh, on that site. But as I say, it secures that, that green lung that we've always tried to maintain across that bit of farm. Any other council wish to speak? Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can we just clarify, if permission is granted, can the applicant decide not to go ahead? Yes, I could decide that. No. Oh, okay. I'll move forward to the uh, recommendation, therefore. The recommendation is that permission Mr. be granted. Mr. Chairman, so, you know what I'm going to oh, say. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I think it's granted, yes. Five minutes, five hours, And, and can, I, can I, on behalf of the council, apologise to the officers, the other councillors and the public for this total farce, yeah, no, which, no. as leader of the council, I promise them will be resolved and yeah. abolished. Yes, OK. I think that's true. Right, can we move forward, please? That permission be granted to the completion of... I think you've got to count the five. Oh, gosh. Do I? OK, five? Yeah, I've got five. So, yeah, OK. Right, finally. That permission be granted subject to completion of a section 106 agreement to secure access and footpath links from Barnum Park, Sang, and to secure the long-term management of the Sang by 12th of May 2020, and that subject to conditions 1 to 6 and informants 1 to 5. Those in favour, please vote. Oh, please vote, anyway. Ten more. Ten in favour, one against. Ten in favour, one against. Okay. Uh, the vote. Next item. WA 2019-0417. Farnham Park Hotel and Resident Lower Hill. Farnham. The proposal is to change of use from mixed use class C1 hotel and A3 restaurant to three dwellings, alterations, elevations and associated parking, including car park, to serve the adjacent church. Again, Rachel, could you please present? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Turning to the location plan, a very familiar plan to what we've just had a look at, focusing this time on the existing hotel, which is located just here. It's a hotel and restaurant, I should say. You'll see there's an existing area of car parking out to the front and the existing access, which is also the access to serve the Sang, just, just considered. Turning to the existing photographs of the hotel and restaurant, this is the building you'll see just here. You'll see it's got quite low eaves, but with further accommodation in the roof provided. There's an existing area of hard standing to the front, which provides for car parking. And the same access into the Sang is just, just adjacent to where the building is. A few further photographs. These are looking a bit further afield. So on the top of the screen, the two photographs are looking at the access into the site. On the bottom left, you'll see the adjacent church. That's a car, that is a church which the proposed car park is intended to serve. And on the bottom right, that again is just a further image of the, of the access which already exists into the site. Turning to the proposal itself, this is the existing building just here. That is the proposal, the building to be converted into three residential dwellings. To the front, you'll see the provision of six car parking spaces. To the other side of the access road, where there's existing, an existing grassed area, you will see the location of the proposed car park for the church. That will provide 23 car parking spaces. There's a proposed footpath just here, which would link up to the church boundary. It will be then open to the church to provide the link within their own site to the entrance to the church in due course. Turning to the floor plans and parking layout, I would just point out at this stage that you'll see from your update sheet there are amended plans. So this is an amended floor plan which you'll see on screen just here. But you'll see there are three dwellings, one, two, three. They're split over two floors and they have each either two or three bedrooms. The change to the plans is to the internal layout at first floor. It has moved the, it has changed the order of some of the bedrooms and non-habitable bathrooms. That is in order to prepare, pre, yeah, start again. That is in order to have the non-habitable bathrooms at the back of the building, which is the area which faces over the neighbouring property. And that is in order to address the privacy reason for refusal that you saw on the agenda report. You will see that one plot does still have 
a rear bedroom with its main outlook this way. I'll talk a bit more about that when we look at the elevations in just a moment. This is the front of the building just here, and this is the rear elevation. So there's very little physical change to the building. It is a conversion of the building rather than any additional operational development. So turning to look at that rear elevation, you'll see there are three windows on the back. Four, sorry, one inclu including the dormer window. In respect of bedroom one here, you'll see that they would have a high-level window, and that's in order to prevent sort of direct, direct overlooking out of that window by virtue of the height. Whilst not ideal from a standard of accommodation perspective and the outlook for that bedroom, <laughs> across the scheme for, for three units and around six bedrooms in total, it's not considered, that, that is not a matter for refusal in, in the officer's eyes. Um, as such, it is recommended on your agenda report that the, loss, the reason for refusal in respect to loss of privacy is addressed. I will just skip back to the site layout to show you where it sits in relation to the neighbouring property. This is the back of the hotel and restaurant building just here. So the direction of those windows in concern is looking this way towards that residential garden area just here. Moving on to the main issues for consideration, I'm just going to, before I talk through this, to look at the update sheet in more detail. You'll see there the amended plans in terms of the first floor plan with the altered layout of the bedrooms and the section plan just there. And that confirms the, that one reason for refusal is removed in respect of the loss of privacy. You'll see there are some clarifications in respect of the heritage section of the report. And there is also an additional letter of representation from the church adjacent. That talks, you'll see that talks about the benefits of the car park to the church in terms of providing much better accessibility and, highway, and in terms of highway safety, providing a point of access, particularly for aspects such as funerals and weddings to the church. There is an update to the plan numbers by virtue of those additional plans. So that is reflected in an amendment to the informative, which is on your update sheet and you'll see the updated recommendation there with just two reasons for refusal. Just to refresh on the main issues for consideration to, for tonight. Firstly, the loss of the existing hotel and restaurant. This is the primary reason for refusal remaining on this application. You will note from the officer and from the agenda report that there has been insufficient information submitted, either by way of marketing information or viability information, to justify the loss of the existing hotel and restaurant. As such, there is a direct conflict with the local plan policy in that respect. Turning to the impact on the countryside, landscape character and visual amenity, you'll note that the report does identify some visual harm from the creation of the church car park. It's an existing area of grassland, which would introduce an, an urbanising feature there. However, officers do note in the agenda report that there would be clear benefits in terms of visual terms by removing some of that on-street car parking, which currently occurs from, from the church and place and so reducing that adverse impact elsewhere. It's also worth noting that due to the position of the car park, the longer term views of that car park are fairly minimal, it's at a low level and as such it would be capable of being mitigated by way of soft landscaping within the site. Turning to the impact on residential amenity, the primary consideration here is the impact of the additional residential units and potential loss of privacy and overlooking. The recommendation is that that concern raised in the agenda report has now been addressed through the change to the internal layout. <coughs> in terms of standard of accommodation, there would be amenity space provided for each of the proposed units, and it is advised that in overall terms, there would be a suitable outlook and overall space standards for the proposed occupants. As a housing land supply, there is a small benefit in terms of the provision of the free additional units on the site. However, the officer advises that, that Latin itself would not be sufficient to outweigh the harm identified in terms of the loss of the existing hotel and restaurant. In terms of the effect on the Thames Basin Heath's SPA, as you'll be familiar with, there is a need for a legal agreement in order to, to secure mitigation for the additional residential units. At this moment in time, there is no completed legal agreement to secure that contribution. And that is why you have a reason for refusal on your agenda in respect of the 
S special protection area. However, in the event that members were to find the application acceptable in terms of the other matters, it would be recommended that um, any recommendation be subject to the completion of that legal agreement to address that reason for refusal. With this in mind, I will turn you back to the, I'll turn you to your agenda report, or sorry, to the update sheet, which has the updated recommendation, and that is for refusal based on the two remaining reasons set out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. We have a public speaker for this item, and I'd like to invite Reverend Hannah Moore to come forward, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to address you all this evening. You have, as you have heard, you've already received our letter in support of the proposed car park from the parish of Bagshot, Lee and Hale. But I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight a few points as to why this car park is vitally important to the community of um, Hale and St John's Church. St John's Church Hale would like to transform the accessibility the to the church. The church has currently no off-road parking spaces for vehicles to drop off passengers safely. Anyone wishing to visit the church must park in the lay-by or in nearby streets, such as Moncton Lane, and these are some distance from the church. The lack of off-road parking is very challenging, especially for funerals, as there is nowhere near the church to unload a coffin. Funeral directors therefore have two options to use the lay-by and then bear the coffin along a narrow pavement and then up a steep slope to the church, which makes accessibility difficult. Alternatively, cause a traffic jam on the very busy A325 by parking on the road closer to the church and then unloading the deceased on the side of the road. Neither of these two options is very dignified. I have officiated at funerals where the funeral director has chosen the second option much to the irritation of road users who have hooted because their road was blocked for a time. This was very distressing for the family of the deceased. There is a desperate need for off-road parking and level access, and this is an opportunity that is unlikely to present itself again. As we stated in our letter, St John's is aiming to improve the quality of life for the local community by working towards the provision of key local facilities and services for the community. This will be achieved by the creation of a vital hub, community hub in North Farnham, based at St John's. The needs of the community have been identified through a community survey, through a needs-based study. During this feasibility, feasibility study, conversations with our local town councillors, ta county councillors and community groups, as well as prospect prospective partners, have been overwhelmingly positive and supportive of our proposed project. The car park will be vital for this community hub to be developed. It will, be, it will support the most, mem most vulnerable members of the community. In doing this work, with a safe off-road car park, the church will be open and accessible to the community every day of the week. Once the project is completed, there will be a community cafe run in, in partnership with Post 19. Youth work won't run in partnership with the relational hub. There will also be a focus on supporting people who struggle with their mental health, supporting families with children with additional needs, and supporting carers. The car park is a lifeline for St John's Church, but it is more importantly a lifeline to the wider community. With the car park, St John's becomes more open and accessible. With the car park, St John's will be able to better serve the local community in the North Farnham and beyond. Creating a community hub at St John's will hugely benefit the local community. As you can see, the benefits of this application go well beyond simply providing a car park. It will positively affect the wider community, providing lasting change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, councillors, who wish to speak first? Councillor... That's Councillor Hunt, sorry. Yeah, I think I think the thing that immediately springs to mind for me is the is the it's almost you're considering two separate things because there's the argument for the car park which will support the church, but then there's also uh, clearly the change of use from Hotel Danielle into the into the residential unit. So, it, you know that that and there are you know and, and I understand the arguments in terms of what the car park would do for the church. 
but it almost seems to me that that is a completely separate it's hard to consider them both as the same application because there are very different arguments it seems to me in respect of those uses of land which are quite separate Thank you, uh, Councillor Hunt. Uh, I mean, as I understand it, you are technically right, but you have the application as it stands. Right. Anyway, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I think Councillor Hunt uh, is absolutely right. We're talking about a balancing act here. Uh, the balancing act of uh, hotel patrons, patrons versus church patrons. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the the church wins. Thank you. The council wishes to speak. Council. You seem to deliberately miss me out tonight, uh, oh. Chairman. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, all land use is a planning balance. I mean, we have to look at what's on offer and see what's the best use of the land. And here we have an application for what is called a hotel which, as we know locally, is six bed and breakfast rooms. Um, when uh, this originally was a house, I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> it's going back to its original, um, it was one of the cluster of, of the houses a long time ago. And what has changed? I mean, there has been so much change. If you look at our policy, our policy does say, it's not a stringent policy, policy of you cannot have a change of use, you must retain all rooms. You've got to balance it with what's going on in the local community. And what we've got in the local community at the moment is a, is a Premier Inn, which wasn't there, the enabling development that we put through at Bishop's Table to secure that future. The Bush Hotel is at the moment trying desperately hard. I'm not started on what's happening in Farnborough, where we've just got hotels coming up like mushrooms. And the other thing, which anybody under 40 wouldn't even start to look at anything like a building, they start with Airbnb and work out from there where they're going to stay. So, you know, we're living in a very, very different world, and we have got to decide whether we protect six uh, bed and breakfast, because we, we call that... I mean, goodness knows how many people it takes to clean six rooms, but, I mean, I could do it in 20 minutes, probably. Um, you know, it's not exactly a, a big employer, is it? I don't know how many rooms a, a hotel person does. Sad to see the um, restaurant go, uh, because I think that, you know, it is a good restaurant. But we have so much commercial space available in Farnham at the moment. We're not talking about a hotel... Um, a, a restaurant use that couldn't relocate. So it is a balance. What are we doing? We're, we're getting rid of six B&B. &B. We're hoping that the hotel, uh, the, um, the restaurant relocates and that the church gets, well, if any, I don't know how many people have been to a funeral there, but you'll know exactly um, what, how difficult it is. So it is a balancing act. What's the best use of this land? We are returning uh, original residential back to residential. It's a change of views. It's not, we're not putting in new houses. And to me, you know, I, I just find the, the pluses of this application so much, they just add up so much more than the minuses. The council wishes to speak? No? 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 All right. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. I, I agree with Councillor Hunt. I know that we have to judge this application as it stands, but it is so obvious to me that that has been a sweetener that, bus that are offering the car park. And it really irritates me that we have to make this decision. We have people who have a business, an ongoing business, an extremely good restaurant in a semi-rural area. I mean, people would flood there if they were going off to the Sang. They would be using that more and more. So it's hard. And of course, I understand the need for the church. But what is the shame here is that you put two people, who two, two groups of people who both need you know, who, who, have, who have viable interests here. Um, I think, uh, as we know, they could actually move into, uh, the, 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 the restaurant could actually move to the centre, but of course the business rates would be a lot higher. 
Um, I think it's a great shame that we have to make any decision on this because I think actually what they should have done, and I think it was a very cynical application, they should have done one separately from the other. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Moore. I think I have to be careful when we use words like cynical, but I mean, you know, yes, Councillor Hess. I agree with Councillor Hunt. It is a very difficult um, application, this, because of the two vying interests. I haven't been to this restaurant, but I've been told by a lot of people it's one of the very best in the area for Sicilian food. And then I've heard what the lady said might be the rector, I'm not sure, no? Anyway, from the church. And I, I can see that the interests of the church are really strong to have a car park there. So really torn, really, really torn. So I am going to abstain on this one because I cannot decide between both very good um, enterprises, church and restaurant. I'm going to abstain. Councillor Coburn. Yes, I, I just see this as, whenever we're looking at a piece of land in the town, we're looking at what's for the greater good of the vast majority of people. This car park is not just for the church, it's, we hope, for all the residents who wish to take part in the activities that uh, a church that is far more accessible can offer. It's the most beautiful church as we looked over the gate at the site visit. It's a lovely church and we've always tried to protect its setting when we've been in appeals and trying to fight um, residential uh, uh, development on this site. So, to me, it's just quite si simply a look at the buildings that are on that site and the use of the land within that site and what is the best use of it. And I have to say, given that our policy does not say we, we have to protect rooms at all costs, it does say look at what's around. I really don't think the loss of six rooms is so significant and the advantage to the general population in Farnham, in this part of Farnham, but also the whole of Farnham, is, is just so much greater. And I just think we, we have to look at this as a piece of land, the uses on that land, and what we think are the most advantageous, the, the uses that give the most benefits to the residents of Farnham. Right. I mean, I, I, I personally, I'm going to say something. I personally said, when I came into this meeting, was very wary, but I must say the Evidence presented by the Reverend has been very interesting, to say the least. Anyway, we move to the... <laughs> Do I take five names? Yes, yeah, OK. Hi, come on, come on, put your hands up. I need five. Yeah, got them. Yes, OK. Right, now, with a recommendation before us that permission be refused with the de deletion of condition two as noted on the end update sheet and the amendments to informative one. So if you wish to support that, you have to vote yes. Refusal, yes. <laughs> So, no, okay. No, no, it's the other way round. It's the other way round. It's counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive, yes, that's right, isn't it? Mm. So, if the commission refused. Refused. Refused, refused. refused, you vote refused. Yeah, that's right. If you vote yes. Refused, yes. If you, refused, yes. Refused, yes. And, and if you wish to approve it, then you vote. No. It's a refusal. It's a refusal. The recommendation is for refusal. Yes. Support the recommendation? They're not supporting the recommendation. That's the point. If you, you support the recommendation, it's a plus. If you support the recommendation, it's a plus. If you do not support the recommendation, it's a minus. That's how I understand it. Yeah? Yes. I know it sounds illogical, but... Yes. yes. OK. OK, does everyone understand? <laughs> All right. Um, 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 um. Mm. Oh, dear. Okay, so it's three in favour of the recommendation. Three in favour of the recommendation. Five against. Five against. And three abstentions. And three abstentions. So we need an alternative motion. So we need an alternative
that permission be granted? Yes, permission yes, be granted. And that's all I want to say. Do have a second? Do you have a second to that? Yes, Councillor Ward. Do you have to give reasons? No. Are we subject to any of these conditions? Reasons. Do, can you want to suggest something, Rachel? Uh, just... Could we have reasons that provides much needed accommodation in the area? Uh, it is not a significant loss of employment. It provides a car park for the church and avoids uh, difficulty in the main road, which is dangerous. Uh, and I'm sure the officers probably have a few conditions up their sleeve which uh, they may wish to apply. Officers, do you want to say anything? Oh, the mature position that way. Oh, the mature position that yes. way. Have you got wording there, Rachel? <laughs> yes, I'm just drafted a few points. I think the key points. I just have a few questions to ask you on this, but at the moment I've got that the amount of accommodation to be lost in terms of the hotel rooms is very minimal. The positives of the additional housing on the site to be weighed into the balance and the benefits of the car park for the church. The question I'd ask members to clarify is whether you consider the loss of the hotel accommodation in this case to comply with the local plan policy, that's policy LT2, that specific, I'll just summarise that for you. So that, the policy seeks to retain visitor-related facilities so that can include the hotel and the restaurant. And in coming to your decision, you need to have regard to the viability of the existing enterprise and public demand for it. So in that essence, you can take into account the extent to which the, the existing restaurant is used. No information has been presented on the viability of the existing enterprise. You're also able to take into account the presence and availability of other similar establishments within the area and town. So the points discussed earlier in terms of other hotels, both in the town centre and further afield, can be taken into account. And also the merits of the proposal in relation to other local plan policies. So it's just really a clarification as to whether you consider that it complies with that policy in your view, or whether it doesn't, but it's outweighed by other factors. I think it does comply with the policy, not 100%, but then that's the whole point of the policy, isn't it? Because it says that the council can take into account presence availability, as you say, of other similar establishments. And th there's no question we've got a um, far greater supply now than we've ever had, uh, the same or similar services, and the merits of the development proposed. And it, the, what's proposed here, um, in terms of, as you say, the the housing, I mean, that accords with our policies. Um, I'm not quite sure, I mean, how you put in the other community benefits, but, you know, surely the, you know, the community benefits that are uh, a result as a result of this um, application outweigh the, the, um, the, the other bit of the policy, I would have said. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I suggest, just in case temptation falls upon them, which is a very unchurchly thing, so we shouldn't think it will happen, that the car park is substantially completed before the houses? I second that. I'm going to jump in and say, so that was sort of the point that we were, we were leading to, to question you on off in terms of the conclusion on the loss of the hotel and employment. From listening to the conversation, I think that some harm is identified in terms of the loss of employment associated with the restaurant, um, and that harm would be the justification for requiring the car park to be provided up front and before the, and before the houses are occupied would be my suggestion. Um, so I suggest that a condition is imposed to say that before any dwelling is occupied of the three that are proposed, that the car park is laid out and made available for use, and that would address that point. Um, we do also need to run through conditions, so what I might quickly just do is run through a suggested list 
for you and obviously correct me or add or take away from that if as you see fit um, so I suggest you have a plan numbers condition which will contain the same plans which are referenced on the informative and matching materials that really only affects the windows to any alteration to the building a soft and hard landscaping scheme specifically that would look to secure soft planting around the car parking area and to ensure a permeable and appropriate surface for the car park itself to minimise the visual harm in that respect. There's no, real, there's no real change in terms of landscaping immediately around the hotel itself, aside from creating a small area of soft landscaping for the garden areas to the front of the hotel. Sorry, not to the hotel, to the dwellings as to what they would be converted to. Details of waste and recycling provision for each dwelling. Uh, restriction on the amount of litres in order to comply with the local plan requirement in that respect for sustainability. Um, conditions in respect of obscure glazing and high level windows. That is turning back to the earlier point in terms of the privacy for the farmhouse referred to here and the garden just beyond. So it would put controls on those windows on the rear elevations to ensure that that privacy is retained to that garden. The other suggestions are removal of permitted to development rights for further windows to be added, a layout, of, a layout to allow the turning of vehicles before the dwelling is occupied, and that's a condition recommended by the Highway Authority. Details of cycle storage within the site and electric vehicle charging points, again, they accord with the recommendations of the Highway Authority in that respect. And the final condition which we're discussing is to require the provision of the car park to be laid out prior to those dwellings being occupied. That would be my suggested list. I think that's an excellent list. May I suggest, Mr Chairman, uh, our, our standard condition on hours of work as well? Can we move to that? Can we move to that? Uh, can I, uh, do we need a second for this? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, so the proposal for this is you, Councillor Corbyn, is it? You're proposing this to be granted. Anybody second? Or oh, you second it already, haven't you, Councillor Corbyn? You did something. Yeah, you, did, you, did, you, did, you did, you did, you did, you did. Right, OK, right. Well, the, the, uh, can you be granted subject to all those conditions we've now added? Um, does anybody want to repeat it or not? No? OK. Right. Um, Right, ready to vote. Right, okay. This time it is quite straightforward. If you want to approve, recommend that as, as granted, and it's yes, and if not, no. Yes, okay, go away. Right, you there. If, if the candidate doesn't vote, he'll be a choose the list. No, they voted. Six in favour and five against. Abstain. Abstain, sorry. Sorry, abstain. That's carried. Okay. Thank you very much. Gosh, what a night. Uh, we move on to the last item on the agenda. WA 2019-0802, the land at 11 Batten Ball Lane, Recklesham. Mr Chairman, may I yes. have a word? You, you've already I'll, into... I'll have to withdraw yeah. as I live yeah. in Batten Ball Lane as well. Yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. The erection of the proposal is an erection of a detached dwelling in an integral garage. And again, Philip has started to present, please. Thank you, Chairman. The application seeks permission for the erection of a detached four-bedroom dwelling with integral garage. Um, it should be noted that permission has previously been granted twice for this scheme. The most recent application, WA 2012-0139, was refused solely for the reason that the Section 106 agreement for the Thames Basin Heath um, mitigation contributions was not agreed prior to the eight-week statutory expiry date. That was the sole reason for refusal on that, on that scheme. Um, and there have been no changes to the proposal from that scheme or the previous um, two applications. 
Turning to the location plan, the application site is located to the northeast of Battenball Lane, which is accessed via Shortheath Road. The site currently comprises an open area of land to the northwest of number 11 Battenball Lane, which is here. The site is accessed via an existing access track. Um, I've sort of shown a zoomed in version of the location plan to show the existing track here. There's a public footpath which runs along Battenball Lane um, and is not inside the site. Um, and there are a number of trees that are subject to um, tree preservation orders which are located outside of the application site. I've, I've noted their approximate location with these green stars um, and they're well separated from the proposed development. Here we see the aerial photograph and you can see the existing access here. Um, and Battenball Lane here, and here we see the existing dwelling at number 11. Turning to the proposed block plan, um, here we see the location of telegraph poles, which would be uh, relocated as part of the proposal to make way for the dwelling. Here we have some photographs of the site. Photograph A is taken from the northwest looking across the site towards number 11. Photograph B is taken from the northeast looking along the boundary between the application site and number 11. Photograph C is taken from the east looking towards the entrance of the site. Photograph D is taken from the northwest looking down the existing access track. E is taken from the south and from the driveway of number 11 looking towards the site up here. And photograph F is taken from the southeast looking towards the western boundary of the site. Here we see the proposed elevations. Um, the dwelling would, be, would have accommodation in the roof space, so it would be 1.5 storeys with um, lower ground garage provision. On this slide, we see the ground floor plan and the first floor plan with the garage sited at lower ground level. So this slide contains what the officers consider to be the main considerations in relation to the proposal. I'll run through each in turn. Planning history, as discussed at the start, it is a material consideration that permission has been previously granted for the proposal, albeit these permissions have now lapsed. In terms of the design and impact on visual amenity, the proposal is considered to be of an appropriate design and to have an acceptable appearance in the street scene in keeping with the character of the area. With regards to impact on residential amenity, whilst the dwelling would be visible from a number of neighbouring properties, in particular number 11, and would alter the current view from the northwestern elevation of number 11, particularly from the first floor dormer windows in this elevation, which currently look across the site, However, the proposed de dwelling would be set away from the boundary and would be set back from the front build line of number 11. Whilst the dwelling would be visible, the proposal is considered to have an acceptable impact on, in terms of residential amenity. In terms of standard of accommodation, whilst the outdoor amenity space is modest, the proposed dwelling is considered to offer an acceptable standard of accommodation to future occupiers. It's acknowledged that there may be a small degree of overlooking from the first floor windows of number 11, However, it's reasonable to expect the future occupiers of, of the dwelling to erect boundary treatment in the form of a fence or vegetation that would offer some screening. With regards to the impact on trees, there are a number of trees subject to TPOs on the south of the application site, including one adjacent to the existing access track. The, proposal, or the proposed dwelling is considered to be sufficiently separated um, from those trees and conditions are recommended to ensure the protection of the trees. With regard to highways, parking and rights of way, um, subject to a number of conditions and an informative reminding the applicant that it is an offence to obstruct or divert the route of a right of way, which in this case runs down Battenball Lane and not across the application site, the County Highway Authority and rights of way officer have raised no objection to the proposal. The application is therefore um, considered acceptable in this regard. With regard to the effect on the um, Thames Basin Heath SPA, Having regard to the signed and completed legal agreement, the effect upon the SPA would be mitigated. With regard to biodiversity, Surrey Wildlife Trust have advised that, that the proposal is acceptable subject to a number of conditions. 
and further details would be required to be provided as part of the protected species licence, which would be required to be sought prior to any development commencing. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, Philippa, thank you very much. And we're public speaking on this item. First is Mr Gregory, I believe, who is an objector. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. There were 11 objections ra raising concerns over the negative impact of this development. The local community feels strongly that there should not be a dwelling sited on Battenball Lane here, and I will try and outline the key reasons now. Whilst planning was originally approved in 2002, there have been many changes to the area since then, and we do not believe that this development is appropriate given the cumulative impact of those changes. Both Wicket Hill and Battenball Lane have been substantially developed in recent years, and the infrastructure is already suffering as a result. Battenball Lane is an unmade single track road and busy designated footpath, regularly used by local walkers and school children. The junctions from the plot at Wicket Hill and at Shortheath Road all have low visibility. The lane has no defined footpath route, so any increase in vehicle traffic could be a hazard to pedestrians. There is insufficient space for construction traffic to turn within the development site, so large vehicles will have no option but to reverse along the footpath a risk to pedestrians, dangerous at junctions, and harmful to the structure of the lane. The entrance to the site climbs a steep bank that is unsupported where it adjoins the lane. Residents are concerned that this could subside under the weight of additional traffic. As an unmade road, which is regularly ero eroded by vehicles and water runoff, the water and sewage pipes are already now very near the surface. The pipes are overloaded and have leaked several times in recent years. The flooding causes damage further down the lane, as well as hazardous waste spilling into the environment. The plans which date from 2002 are very simplistic and have not been accurately updated to reflect the position of our property. The section plans indicate the ground level and ridge height of our house, but these are incorrect and also show trees which no longer exist. There are no elevations depicting the property's height against our own and there are no detailed measurements stating how far it would sit from the boundary. As the plans do not show how the design will integrate with the site and surroundings, and the development does not appear to make a positive contribution to the appearance of the area, we do not believe that they comply with the local plan. The land is at a much higher level to our own, so the three-storey property would tower over our house, causing overshadowing, constituting overbearing developments. We are very concerned about overlooking and loss of privacy, as a new dwelling will have clear views into the living areas and bedrooms and family bathroom. There is no screening in place, but even the addition of a fence would not prevent overlooking as the land is that much higher, and a fence itself would be overbearing, causing loss of light into our front rooms. There has been no daylight assessment to evaluate the effect of this. If the electricity cables were to, were to be moved, it would require at least three additional poles to divert the cables around the site, which would add to overdevelopment of our semi-rural landscape. A long, noisy gravel driveway and lights on a motion sensor will likely cause a nuisance and disturb sleep, adversely impacting adjoining neighbours' residential amenity. The ecology survey identified protected species on the land, particularly badgers and slowworms. We appreciate that plans are put in place to reduce the impact of harm to this wildlife, but the development would result in the loss of foraging habitat for these animals. It should also be noted that there is no right of access to the, to the dwellings on the lane an issue which has prevented development in the past. We understand that legal access to the site is required to allow permission to be granted. For these reasons, we ask that this planning application please be refused. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and finally, we have another public speaker supporting Mr Warren. Mr Chris Warren, please. Chair, members, good evening. My name is Christopher Warren. I am the applicant. My wife and I have owned this land for a number of years now. I would first of all like to thank the officers for their detailed, thorough, 
and inform report to members. As you've already been advised by the officer, this application is absolutely identical in every aspect to the two consents that this committee has previously granted on this site in 2002 and 2008 and meets all national and local policies. My wife and I intended building the house in 2009-10, having got the consent in 2008. However, owing to extenuating external factors, we did not do so at the time. We have now sold our house of 31 years and are renting with the intention of building the house and making it our home with our daughter for the future. I would like to just take this opportunity of raising a couple of aspects that the previous speaker raised, which I was not previously aware of. First of all, we have full legal rights down Battenball Lane and I will be taking this up with my solicitor for what he has just said. We also have full written consent from Thames Water for connection to the sewer. As you are aware, and you've also been advised, your council is holding a signed section 106 agreement for the SBA and contribution. I would like to thank you for your time and trust you can now support the officer's recommendation and grant consent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Warren. Right. Who wish to speak? Anyone wish? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Councillor Ward and then um, Thank you, Chairman. Um, I thought this was rather large and overlooking the last time it came up, and, and my view on that hasn't changed. Um, uh, reading through the notes and also of the objections, um, there seems to be a lot of public concern locally about a caravan being parked there during the duration of the building. Um, and although I think it's going to be very difficult to refuse this in view of its past history, I think it would give quite a lot of comfort to some of the residents uh, if their concerns re a habitation caravan could be addressed in conditions somehow, as well as the, the normal conditions which we apply. Thank you. Um, from our perspective, it's a completely separate matter that's not relevant to to this application. Um, they're not proposed um, a, a caravan, and, and we're looking at a, a dwelling. So it's a condition that you couldn't put one on there would be um, would be be not not relevant to what we've got in front of us at the moment. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Hess. Yes, Chairman. Um, the um, officer referred to the garages being below ground level um, and I think I'm right that it was referred to as being a story and a half however the um, resident from number 11 has just referred to a three-story house so I'd just like a little clarification that the um, house structure above ground level is a story and a half, um, and not three, three stories. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, as I've just brought the elevations up onto the screen, and um, you can see that on this northwestern side elevation the dotted line here, which shows where the um, the garage would be constructed below ground, um, and then we can see we have one one story, and the rest in the the roof space. Thank you. Mr Edmonds. I would be concerned unless service vehicles can proceed on Button Ball Lane in forward gear. I'm a pedestrian on Button Ball Lane and it is quite a, how could I put it, a hazardous footpath or road. Uh, I would object to the development if service vehicles could not service this property and turn around and proceed in forward gear 
John Patton Baldwin. Thank you. Any other council wish to speak? Uh huh. Um, council. Yeah, just <clears throat> it's just a point, really. It'd just be really, presumably, these proposed elevations. Is this the drawings and the plans from the um, permission that was granted years and years and years ago? I just think it'd be really helpful if we could see that in relation to the other properties in terms of the elevation and how it does kind of fit in as we were able to do with the um, uh, the application that we talked about earlier, uh, where the bungalow was being turned into the um, detached house. Uh, because we can't really see how this relates to the other houses, uh, you know, in particular the neighbours on, on this. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, I'm afraid we don't have um, street scene elevations provided with the application. Um, I can point you to the um, location plan, which does show the location of, of the nearby dwellings, but I, I do not have a street scene that I can show you, I'm afraid. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, I, I don't see we've got any grounds to refuse this, given, given the history, and even if we have reservations about it. Um, uh, you, you can't blame an applicant for the state of a road, you know, and we have roads, lanes like this all over the Bourne and Shorteath and Fergrove, all sorts of places where, you know, we have to make special arrangements and we have all sorts of vehicles that have to come reverse into some of these narrow roads and then go out in forward gear and you know we're never going to solve well we're not allowed to solve the problems of a lane by um you know penalizing people who are coming along and adding to an existing problem so um i i i have the same reservations i think as uh, as councillor ward but i think given the history i don't think we have any choice on this i think we'd be being totally unreasonable if we were to refuse <laughs> Thank you. I went to have a look at the site today, and um, could you put it up to the photographs that we can see? Yeah. Now, that all looks... It's difficult to see there how um, the land changes quite dramatically. In an actual fact, um, that pole looks quite small. When you're down in the neighbour's garden... Um, Yes, like that. You can see that the edge of the land uh, where they want to build on is almost sort of three quarters of the way up the side of that building, which is their sort of um, extension and garage. And their house comes around the corner here. So it's incredibly high up. And do you see where the pole now reaches right up there? Essentially, I would say that the house I could, uh, will, will be sitting on that higher level. Uh, and it will reach right up there, so it will be looking right down on them. Now, obviously, because it's on that raised ground, they can't put, or they have said, the applicant has said that they want to put a, a, um, a fence along there, but that really, a, um, that really won't be any, any... I mean, it will just be a boundary. It won't really help in terms of the impact it will have on uh, looking down onto the, onto the neighbour's house. Um, so I, I feel in terms of that, it's very concerning that something so big and tall should be standing in a position dwarfing the other house. And uh, I think it, I'm not sure that it will affect the, the sun, but it certainly will have an impact on a certain amount of light in the front door, the porch in that area. Um, but uh, so that was my main concern about it. The bank where they will come through in order to... Um, develop the land is 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 not sturdy at all there that is going to be a problem so i that's another concern there will be quite a lot i imagine of movement of soil and spoil to get out of that area and it's an incredibly tight drive to get down there um to turn around uh would be very difficult but yeah so those are my main concerns for the for the for the thing thanks Thank you, Chair. I'm just wondering whether the officers can give any more clarification to this um, disagreement about the right of access. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, any um, concerns reg regarding rights of access would be a civil matter and not, not a planning matter for consideration here tonight. Thank you. I would add, Councillor, that the Council of Rights of Weird Offices had no comments, actually. That's right. Okay. Right. Uh, Councillor Clark. Uh, two points. Um, one is a question. Uh, are the previous uh, planning applications which were granted, I am assuming that these are a material consideration? I'd say yes. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Well, if, if this was to come before the committee for the first time, I think we are not being provided with uh, enough detail in terms of layouts, measurements. In fact, we are provided with rather childish drawings. And certainly, I wouldn't be able to come to any sort of conclusion with what we've got in front of us today. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I would like to draw attention to the consultation. The formal consultations have been produced, actually. Farm Town Council, no objection. Surrey Wild Trust, no objection. Thames Water Utilities, no objection. Southern Water, no objection. County Highway Authority, no objection, subject to conditions and informatives and Natural England, no objection. Any other council wish to speak? No? Yes, Councillor S. Just a couple of thoughts. Um, when on the site visit earlier um, with Councillor Murleys, um, I, I agree with her comments about the weak bank. Uh, concrete trucks and heavy construction vehicles could do significant damage to that. So that's a, just something that has to be borne in mind. Um, the resident I met briefly did make the point <clears throat> that um, those power poles are very overbearing. And I just wondered whether, if it was approved, whether they could be laid in the ground. Um, and the last point was noise of gravel drive, because apparently the drive to access the property, if built, if approved, uh, is proposed to be gravel. And I just wondered whether that could be a different material which would be less noisy because of children's bedrooms overlooking. Thank you. Done that. Just to clarify, they're not proposing to sink the, um, the, the power lines. They've shown a rerouting, re um, so we've got to consider it on, on that basis. Um, and in terms of um, the driveway material, um, we'll condition materials, but, the, um, but in terms of noise and disturbance from that, it's unlikely to be so um, significant to warrant a, a, a certain type of material, um, in our opinion. Thank you, Chairman. Anybody else? Mr. Ward, yeah, I know. Are we, um, yeah, all right. Five, please, sorry. Yeah, okay, I got it, got it. Oh, come on, five. Okay, right. Can we vote, please, on the recommendation? That subject to conditions one to eleven and informers one to eight. Permission be granted. Please vote. Six, four, four, six, four, and four against. Four against. And four against. So the, it is approved. It's carried. Right. It's carried, thank you. Okay, well, that, I think, um, uh, almost brings us to the uh, No rights to get an exempt session so that this concludes this evening's meeting. I would like to thank you for your forbearance uh, during the voting season. And I'm sure, uh, I certainly hope we can certainly um, have things in order so that we can sort out the voting that is always done. Thank you very much. Good night.